Monica and Chandar are a married couple. They have been married for the past 8 years and they have been trying and failing to conceive for the past 8 years. They have not been able to have a baby naturally in the past 8 years. They visit a doctor and the doctor tells that either one or both of them are suffering from a condition known as infertility. Infertility is the inability to conceive or have children. Infertility could be caused by a lot of reasons in men and women. Some reasons for infertility in women include damaged fallopian tubes, problem in the release of egg from the ovaries, polycystic ovarian disorder, hormonal problems, or the inability of the uterus to maintain an embryo. Infertility in men could be caused due to low sperm count, decreased sperm motility, or the testes not being able to release the sperm. Now initially when the couples go for a treatment for infertility the doctors don't immediately suggest any unnatural processes to conceive the doctors first advise the couple to do some lifestyle changes like for men to quit smoking because smoking has been linked with decreased sperm count and sperm motility they could also prescribe some medication and drugs which could help the couples conceive if all these are still not helping the couple conceive then the doctors would advise the couples go through something known as assisted reproductive techniques art now in vitro fertilization or ivf is a form of assisted reproductive techniques and in vitro fertilization means the fertilization is happening outside the body in vitro means in a petri dish or in a laboratory condition the fertilization that happens inside a woman's body naturally is known as in vivo fertilization in vitro means the fertilization of the sperm and egg is happening outside the woman's body ivf in india was pioneered by a doctor known as dr subhash mukhopadhyay in the year 1978 he used this technique on a woman and helped her give birth to a baby girl a healthy baby girl known as durga and that baby was the first baby to be born in india using the process of ivf Now in this video we'll talk about the steps involved in IVF and some advantages and disadvantages of IVF. Now it looks like a simple enough process but you should remember that this process must be performed only under medical conditions by experts that way the risks of contamination infection and other complications can be avoided. First the ovaries in the woman are stimulated to release more than one egg. Naturally during the process of ovulation a woman releases one egg per month from one ovary now why is the ovary stimulated to release more than one egg you see this egg has to be somehow collected from the woman's body and fertilization needs to take place outside to increase the chances of fertilization to increase the success of ivf the ovaries are stimulated and more than one egg is made to be released and the eggs are collected this way the chances of fertilization improves Now this is why at many times women going through IVF have multiple pregnancies that is they have either twins or triplets because more than one egg is released and more than one embryo is implanted after the egg is made to be released from the ovaries the eggs are collected from the fallopian tubes now because the fertilization itself is taking place outside the woman's body sperm is also collected from the male partner from the testes and the egg and sperm are allowed to combine in a petri dish a petri dish is something that looks like this you might have seen one in the lab the egg and sperm are combined and allowed to grow in a petri dish now this petri dish has conditions that mimic the fallopian tube like the nutrient availability and the temperature of the petri dish is maintained such that the conditions mimic the conditions of fallopian tube where the actual fertilization is taking place this allows for the sperm and egg to fertilize properly once the sperm and egg have fertilized the embryos are identified and the embryos are then transferred into the woman's body now this could be done in two different places either the embryo in its early stages could be inserted into the fallopian tube of the woman from where it will move to the uterus and get implanted by itself or the embryo could be transferred directly to the uterus itself where it directly gets implanted into the uterine wall once this is done a positive pregnancy test will indicate that the process has successfully resulted in a pregnancy this cycle this whole ivf cycle takes about 4 to 6 weeks to complete even though it looks quite simple ivf is a 
complicated process. The hormones like follicle stimulating hormone and human chorionic gonadotropin are given to women to stimulate the ovaries to produce more eggs. Now these hormones are given in the form of injections. If you remember from the ovarian cycle, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH is the hormone that causes the graphene follicle to mature. So during this whole process, the woman is closely monitored. Her temperature levels, her hormone levels are constantly being monitored to make sure that everything is going according to the plan. Quite soon after the eggs are released, the eggs are retrieved using a transvaginal ultrasound device. So the transvaginal ultrasound device is inserted through the vagina, up the cervix, up the uterus into the fallopian tube. One end of the device has a small suction device that's going to gently capture the eggs and retrieve it outside. Once outside, the egg and sperm are incubated for around 14 hours. Now sometimes the egg and sperm may be just allowed to incubate directly. But in some cases where the male partner's sperm has low motility or low viability rate, in those cases, the nucleus from the sperm is extracted separately and is inserted into the cytoplasm of the egg cell. This process is known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Whichever way the egg and sperm are allowed to fertilize, the embryos are allowed to culture for 5 to 6 days. And during this stage, the embryos grow up to the blastocyst stage. Once they are in the blastocyst stage, they are transferred into the woman's body using a catheter. Like I mentioned, it could be either into the fallopian tube or in the uterus. Now that we have talked about the steps involved in IVF, let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of in vitro fertilization. Before we go ahead with that, here's a little trivia about IVF. Babies born through this procedure are known as test tube babies. And this is quite a misnomer because the babies don't grow directly in test tubes. That would be absurd. Nor do the labs use test tubes to culture sperm and eggs. The culturing is actually done in a petri dish. But because test tubes are quite commonly found apparatus in labs, this whole process took on the name of test tube babies. The advantages of IVF includes the fact that it allows infertile people to have children. It allows people who have been trying so hard and failing to conceive to have children. This process has a high success rate in terms of women conceiving and giving birth to live babies. Off late with the advancement of technology, IVF success rate has improved drastically. It also allows people to use donors. In some cases, the oviducts of the woman may be blocked completely and it may not be possible to retrieve the egg at all. In those cases, the couple could use an egg donor, which is another woman from whom the eggs are collected. Or in some cases, the men might be completely infertile and sperm might be collected from a sperm donor. When the embryos are being cultured in the petri dish, they can be screened for genetic disorders. This could be useful for people with genetic disorders that don't want to pass on their disorders to their offspring. It also has a lot of disadvantages. The main one being that it's quite expensive. In India, it takes about 1.5 lakhs to 3 lakhs per cycle of AVF. And it is usually not covered by any insurance, nor is it available for free in government hospitals. As of now, in India, only private practices are allowed to perform IVF and they charge quite a lot of money for each cycle. The entire cycle of IVF, the injecting of hormones, extracting of eggs and implanting of embryos, it takes a physical toll on women. It makes the woman quite weak actually. And it also takes a psychological toll on women and men as well. There are a lot of ethical concerns related to IVF as well. That is related to the fact that the embryos can be screened for genetic disorders. Not just that, but the embryos can actually be selected for specific traits. Like the couple could say that I want my baby to look like this to have this trait and genes can be screened for those traits and that embryo can be implanted. It would be like the couple is tailor making the baby, which raises a lot of ethical concerns. Last but not least, IVF doesn't entirely guarantee pregnancy. Even if the cycle is successful, the embryo is implanted in the uterus, it may not always guarantee in pregnancy. Even with a high success rate, there is no guarantee of pregnancy. People might need to go through three or four cycles of IVF, repeated cycles of IVF, and even after then, some may not be able to have a baby. There are other methods of assisted reproductive techniques as well. We will tackle those in different videos.